Hello again all, it's Scott, S3 Model Works, I'm back, and uh, I've hit a bit of a milestone tonight, and I just wanted to say thank you to my YouTube subscribers, I hit 50 subscribers tonight, right on, thank you guys all for the uh, <clears throat> subs, your uh, kind and gentle comments, and your, uh, your very neat and inspirational posts and support, I, I really do appreciate it, that's a milestone for me, but I wanted to uh, <clears throat> throw that out and uh, let everybody know uh, where I'm at. I'm not really going to talk about models tonight because I wanted to address two things. First off, my three shout-outs are uh, going to go to uh, Carl over at Making Models and uh, Steve over at Totally Scale Models and also uh, James over at Model Officers Mess who hosted the uh, Saturday Night Crash um, earlier today. It just turned Sunday here. It's 2 a.m. The family's all in bed, so that's why I'm doing my videos out here in the garage. I have a lot of content tonight that I would like to talk to you guys about, and most of it's about safety and uh, some of the hazards that exist on our workbenches. But to you three gentlemen, thank you for your gracious, if not very impromptu and unexpected invite to uh, join your live feed tonight. Apologize that I did such a poor job at, at spending most of the crush trying to join the feed. I was really only able to join him for about 20 minutes, and I had so many throughput problems at home uh, because I didn't have my devices squared away, I didn't have my camera set up, I didn't have anything set up, so I just looked like a rube. But I wanted to apologize to you guys, but thank you for that great invite. And as soon as I get my stuff squared away, I would love to join you again and actually do some model building on camera. That was cool and that was my first uh, live stream experience on YouTube. So anyway, a um, good friend of mine, Steph Kitely, and uh, Steph had asked uh, a real neat question earlier and he put up a, a he's, he's a relatively new uh, YouTube content maker, but I think he's making some really cool stuff and I'm really digging his videos because they're short, sweet, to the point, unlike I'm going to be tonight, but I am going to try. But for Steph, uh, this video is for you, buddy. And uh, Steph's question basically revolves around, is there a better alternative to Tamiya Extra Thin for doing our plastic modelers? <laughs> modelers, our plastic models. And i got to be honest with you, Steph. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head when you found the acetone with it because acetone, at least in my opinion, is one of the less intrusive chemicals into the human body and I think you demonstrated very well on the camera so I really think you answered your own question. But on a larger scale, considering some of the things that, that we talked about privately in messaging that I wanted to address tonight was um, some of the chemical properties and... Um, attributes of some of the things on our bench but tonight I would love to start with a reiteration of the material safety safety data sheet for Tamiya extra thin cement and it is not clarified on here but if you don't know what a material safety data sheet is my background comes from Petrochem has waste remediation and the fire service and I was a bit of a hazmat guru during that time and I still continue to be enamored by the physical properties of chemical because, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a synthetic world anymore. We are surrounded by plastics, vinyls, acrylics, butyls, acetates, all kinds of stuff. All things that we're going to talk about. And <clears throat> I am going to be using the 1948 edition of the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. This is the 30th edition from 1948, and this particular volume was published every year from 1914 to 1948, with the exceptions of 1921 and 1923. Why those two particular years? I don't know. I have some bookmarks laid out here. I only have four or five of them laid out because there's an immense amount of information on here, but I just wanted to review this material data sheet to you. Tamiya claims the Ikegami paint industry um, out of uh, Shizuoka Prefecture in Japan. The revision on this is uh, August of 2011. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement is an adhesive and its uh, gross health scale classification is that it is basically a division 2, 2B, 3, and 4 as well as a division 1, 2, and 3 um, in summary of its danger and harm. <clears throat> it is considered an inflammable liquid with acute 
toxicity on uh, inhalation for systemic divisions, um, and acute toxicity for an inhalation of mist. It is a skin corrosion and irritant. It is serious eye damage with eye irritation. It causes reproductive toxicity with specific target organs and uh, systemic toxicity for a single exposure, also for a repeated exposure. How many times are we building models and you see us clanking this stuff around going one drop, two drop, three drops. <laughs> You know, we're putting this stuff all over like we were accountants with a blotter or a rocker stamp. It is an aspiration hazard, which means that you can swallow it. It is um, also hazardous to uh, anything in an aquatic environment. The label element basically consists of fire symbology, which is a universal pictograph to mean, yeah, it's flammable. Um, it also comes with a big exclamation point, which means there are general precautions associated with it. It comes with the old skull and crossbones. That don't pertain to piracy. That pertains to poison. And there's also a pictograph that I don't know if you guys are familiar with. But these are labels. If you start looking at your modeling stuff, you, you might pick some of them up. But basically, it's the torso of a human being with a six-sided star. One points head, one points here. You know, there's one, two, three, four, and then there's five, six. Roughly, that relates to everything that it affects and I've said this before in a couple of my videos I'm going to say it again target organ hazards are your number one concern with your modeling things that means that it affects heart lungs liver kidneys brain and your delicate CNS there's your six hence the six-sided star on there that's how those pictographs work because humans are stupid and we don't understand information for the most part um, harmful materials, it is, and I'm reading this to you guys because I'm trying to clarify some information with Steph because I've done research on this and with my hazmat background, I am not a chemical engineer, I am not a petroleum engineer, I have just enough dangerous knowledge to make me sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I do have a, a, a fair bit of uh, insight into some of this stuff and I'll share with you guys why but I'll also ask you to please respect my privacy and not smear this all over the internet because I could be liable for some of its content but this is the way it was printed out of Shizuoka Japan and you will notice that as I read through this I'm gonna read it word for word so that you can see for yourself that it begins to contradict itself and it starts just about now harmful materials liquid and steam with high inflammability the skin is slight stimulated Stimulation of serious eyes, period. It is fear of hereditary disorder, period. It is a doubt of the fear of carcinogenesis, cancers. It is a fear of the adverse effects on genital or the embryo, which means <clears throat> that it's a pathogen. Single exposure division 1, 2, 3, uh, it's an anesthetic action, trouble of internal organs, uh, respiratory organs, blood, repeated exposure, trouble of internal organs when swallow it and invade the respiratory tract, fear of the harmfulness, period, toxic to an aqueous creature, we've already covered that. Here are what Tania claims to be its 50-50 um, constituents, butyl acetate and acetone and those are classified under CAS numbers which are clearly delineated on this document that I'm reading from and this is coming straight off my tablet just so you guys know I'm not playing a bunch of BS with you. Ah, I just lost it. I got it. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, um, I'm going to challenge them with what these two constituent components are because I've already done this research and I've had a couple of very <clears throat> smart good friends of mine help me uh, actually translate some documents both out of Japanese and Chinese that have, have helped us discover that there's a lot more in Tamiya Extra Thin than just what they're claiming on the label right here. But Tamiya is claiming 50-50 and um, let me just read through a little bit more of this so you guys can see just how badly this document begins to contradict itself. Uh, first aid measures for eye contact, just like anything, gently rinse the affected eyes under the eyelids with clean water for at least 15 minutes, remove contact lenses if possible. For skin contact, remove all contaminated clothing, shoes and socks from the affected areas quickly, cutting them off if necessary, wash all affected areas and move to nearest medical facility. Remove, remove for inhalation hazards, remove the victim from the contamination immediately to fresh air. 
uh, ingestion do not induce vomiting. You know why they tell you that? Because it's a caustic. They don't want it coming back up through your elementary canals and causing additional throat and or respiratory problems. Um, there's a bunch of other things on here about firefighting measures. Believe me, you can look this document up for yourself. If you just Google MSDS for Tamiya Extra Thin, you can read it for yourself. I'm not going to waste any more time doing this, but trust me, it's a poorly worded document. It sucks, and if I were still in the fire service on a hazmat tech scene, this would be the first thing that I'd wipe my butt with and put in a trash can. What a POS document. Um, it covers things like handling and storage, yada, yada, yada. Uh, stability and reactivity, just as the last thing here. Material with danger by contact. Star it is an oxidizing agent. Outbreak of a harmful gas by combustion. There is a threat that harmful gas such as CO, carbon monoxide, CO occurs with every fire, right? Um, others, others, reactivity, information, star, to be normal condition is stability. Anyway, this document just proceeds to just annoy the crap out of me. All right. Page one, done. Um, in this book, I just wanted to share with you guys real quickly <clears throat> the length and breadth of some of the contents of this. And I'm really just going to go over the main categories of the contents. This book includes mathematical tables. It includes properties and physical constants. It includes general chemical tables. It includes specific gravities and properties of matter. That is a huge category right there. It is. It also contains hygrometric and barometric tables. And again, guys, I'm not trying to teach you chemistry. I'm just trying to teach you some of the things on our bench. Most of the things on your bench, if you really open your eyes and start looking around, can be quite dangerous. So the bottom line is protect yourselves. Protect your families. <clears throat> um, it also covers uh, sound, electricity, and magnetism. It light quantity units and miscellaneous and I'm going to move straight into my very first category and I'm going to make <clears throat> a comparison to something which sounds like it's very dangerous but it's actually not. Now I just pulled this out of my drawer. I've already previewed some of my paint drawers and my glue storage that's over here on my left hand side probably appearing on you guys' right hand side. Um, this is uh, Daler Rowney. It's Aquafine. It's watercolor ink. Sounds pretty harmless, huh? You want to hear what the chemical equivalent of the name is? Um, dimethyoxalbenzol or benzol, uh, benzonitrile. It exists under a synonym of benzone carbon nitrile phenyl cyanide. It then goes on to give uh, formulas, molecular weights, crystalline form, um, which is a basic measurement of the uh, form, color, and index of refraction, along with its densities, melting points, both measured in Celsius for melting points, boiling points, and its solubility in grams per hundred milliliters of water. Basically, it's a pigment paste, is what it is. Will it make you sick to your stomach? Probably. Will it cause you long-term damage? Most likely not. And I know I nodded my head yes, but I'm trying to prove a point here. Anyway, that's my first bookmark. Okay? Sounds very, very dangerous out of this book. It's not. And right there on the back side, <clears throat> I had to do a little bit of uh, bastardization on this video because the actual con constituent on here, as it is described, because this is made in... Um, the United Kingdom, um, benzoisothiazole, so that also sounds very dangerous, but the bottom line is, it's acrylic pigment. So anyway, um, moving straight along to some of the uh, properties and physical contents, um, there's a few things in here that I wanted to address, and these are, are pretty much the four or five that I'm going to focus on tonight, because like I said, there's a lot of information in here, <clears throat> and all I'm really trying to do here is share with you guys that in the big scope of things like, oh, uh, there's some Vallejo natural resin, <clears throat> acrylic, water soluble. Also, there's some uh, MIG ammo acrylic color. This is going to be an interesting discussion later. Um, we also got some AK. Here's an enamel wash. Here's some more AK wet fluid, wet fluid, wet, excuse me, wet effects fluid. We're going to talk about those too. Um, <clears throat> but since I'm already halfway through my record time tonight, we're going to move straight into my second bookmark. And I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. 
Um, since I showed you the resins and the maskings first, we're going to first address the physical and chemical constants of resins, oleo resins, and gum resins. Guess what these are made out of? Um, <clears throat> they're all class 1, 2, and 3 oleo acids uh, containing alcohol, benzene, chloroform, ether, excuse me, ethylene, ether, ethylene acetate, ethyl oil of turpentine, partially soluble, um, partly soluble, slightly soluble, or completely soluble in water. Here's where we get a little bit different. Resins, class 3, gum resins, acid, acetate, acetone, <coughs> stuff, glacial, acetic, acetate, insoluble, and its insolubility across uh, its constituents with things like Lee groin, methyl alcohol, uh, oil turpentine, uh, soluble in water. Um, while these look relatively inoffensive and they're marketed as acrylic, they have dangers as well. I wouldn't be drinking them. I wouldn't be keeping them on my skin for any length of time either. Are they the worst of the bunch that we're going to talk about? No. No. No, they're not. Um, let me see if I can find a good... Here we go. This is always a good one. And you guys are going to hear me refer a lot tonight about acetic acids because I think you're going to find out that in the big scope of chemistry and uh, physics as well as how it relates to anatomy, physiology, and I'm talking about human and, and, and any living animal's anatomy and physiology because we've already determined that a lot of this stuff, especially the, to me, extra thin is an aquatic hazard. So that includes fishes. Sewers, animals that drink from static water sources, and anything else that survives in that sort of environment. Um, you're also going to hear me uh, tonight um, refer a lot to uh, toluene or toluene <clears throat> as it pertains. Um, toluene, nasty stuff. But anyway, we're going to move right into section two. And I just wanted to share with you guys some of the manufacturers. And you remember how I mentioned about us living in a synthetic world? Plastics. Got all kinds of them here, man. Everything from uh, simple cellulide, formica, nixonite. Never heard of it. Don't really care. Vinylite, textolite. Let me just go through... Uh, some of the trade names and the compositions of some of those that I just mentioned. One is a polyvinyl acetyl, one is a cellulose acetate, one is a melamine formaldehyde, that ain't good for humans, one is an ethyl cellulose, that also ain't good for humans, one's a phenol formaldehyde, uh, one's a urea thalamide, um, this goes on and on and on, one's a vinyl chloride acetate copolymer. And here's some of the manufacturers of those plastics. American Plastic Corp. Uh, plastic Corp. Um, carbide and carbide. <laughs> carbide and carbon chemicals, New York. Now remember, some of these, some of these businesses and industries have changed names over the year. Uh, Dow Chemical Company, Durez Plastics, General Electric, Goodyear Tire, um, Macalot, Marblet Corporation. Um, Nixon Nitrate Works. You guys catching the reference to Band of Brothers there? Where did uh, Lieutenant Nixon work and operate after the war? Nixon Nitration Works. Imagine that. 1948. Hmm. Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Corp. I'm just trying to lay out some of these for you guys so that you understand some of the things that we're talking about. And believe me, I previewed my book trying to get through a lot of this so that I could share it with you guys because there is a ton of information here. And like I said, I am not <clears throat> an expert. Um, let me show you something that I have on my bench real quick. I've been doing some weathering on my T34 tracks. These are some homemade pigments out of pastel chalk, artist chalks. And we are going to talk about the physical properties of pigments. And this is trial data on painting materials, pigments, and inert materials. Doesn't sound much like a uh, refinery chemistry and physics book, does it? Sounds kind of like everyday life in the modern world. Um, 
Let's just pick one. Um, here's one of my favorite colors, Cerulean Blue. It probably doesn't make a great pigment, but <clears throat> Cerulean Blue has a specific gravity that's undefined. It is a round grain. Uh, its refractive index really doesn't play a part with what we're talking about tonight, so let's pick another one, because I really just wanted to kind of go over the particle characteristics with you guys, but there's a whole three-page list of all the different colors in here, and I'll just put a, a few of them down. There's charcoal black, there's uh, chromium oxide green, there's uh, lamp black, there's gypsum, there's cobalt yellow, there's diatomaceous earth, there's Prussian blue, there's pumice, there's uh, titanium, there's ultramarine, there's van dyke brown. That's a, that's a popular one. There's red lead, there's sepia, there's sienna burnt. That's another popular weathering color, isn't it? So let's go over some of these uh, particle characteristics. And you guys are going to find, I, I, I'm not going to cross-reference every single one that I went across. They go from uh, very fine amorphic particles to very fine crystals to irregular amorphic particles to minuscule round grains to round grains with hollow spherulites to irritating splintery particulates in fine vermicular crystals with fine green aggregate. How's that? That exists under China clay, or something called kaolinite. Everything from pr prisms to crystal frags. And nothing really anything more interesting on uh, the particle care characteristics. If you guys have ever done pigment work, um, you'll figure out real quick you want to keep your face away from it. It's like eating too many jelly donuts and ingesting too much powdered sugar at one time. And you <gasps> God, where's my coffee? I got him. I'm going to choke to death. I'm trying to be funny on a very serious subject, but I really do want you guys to know that there are definitive hazards um, that are associated with our hobby. And I, I want you guys to take precautions, protect yourselves, protect your families, very specifically the very young and the very old, just like it is with the C-19 disease. Those are substantially at-risk groups, as well as yourself. There's only two types of exposures when it comes to chemicals. There's acute and there's chronic. Acute tend to be one-time, high-dose, with ill deficit effects over a very short period of time. There's also chronic exposures, which tend to be much smaller doses over a long period of time, which generally result in an even larger deficit because all of these constituents are cumulative within <clears throat> every human body, every organic body. That includes animals and fishes. If you ever caught a fish in the sea that has a weird lump in it, don't eat it because it's probably near the outfall of some sort of wastewater treatment plant, yada, yada, yada. i got to get going on this. I'm already 23 minutes in. Um, so anyway, I'm going to close this big ugly book of ugliness, and we're going to move through some other things. <clears throat> I just wanted to read and share with you guys a couple of things. Here's some uh, uh, tester's paint. This is uh, zinc chromate green. Excuse me, i got to put my readers on real quick. Warning, contains petroleum distillates, conforms to ASTM uh, D 4236. ASTM is the American Standards and Testing Measures for Chemical Properties. That's tested. That's an American blend. Here's some Abtide on 502. I'm not even going to waste that uh, pretty sunny flesh tone pink oil paint right there. There is not a single warning on this, on the tube, and this is unopened on the exterior box or on the tube. Not one. Not one. Got some Model Master acrylic here. Um, caution, eye irritant. Contains glycol ethers. Avoid eye contact. AS 4236 again. Let's move into uh, Model Master enamels. Contains petroleum distillates. Keep from heat, flame, and children. Again, ASTM 4236. You guys will find out <coughs> for yourselves that that's. Uh, that's a that's a that's a very well recognized and accredited organization. Here's a model master lacquer. This is uh, aluminum plate buffing. Mm, Stir well. Spray light coats contains alcohols, acetates. I told you we were going to talk about acetates, didn't I? Acetone, M E K. I'm sorry. This is a lacquer. If I misspoke and said this is an enamel, I meant that this is a lacquer. M E K makes per perfect sense in there. And if you don't know what M E K is. 
take a peruse on the internet. Uh, you talk about one of them target organ killers. Also contains, in addition to MEK, hmm. additional petroleum acetates. Here's some Mr. Surfacer 1000, and I can't read it, but the bottom line is, this is basically the Asian, uh, this little X here, this is the Asian equivalent of the exclamation point that I was explaining to you guys earlier, along with the international fire symbology contained therein. Um, that's a crappy bottle, I'm unable to read it. This is some uh, all-clad stainless, uh, stainless steel ALC 115. Highly flammable liquid and vapor keep away from open flames, ensure adequate ventilation, irritant in case of eye contact, blah, blah, blah. Comes with the fire symbol. Okay. Fire symbol and <coughs> exclamation point right there. Um, here's some Liquitex ink. Contains nothing whatsoever. We've kind of already discussed pigments. They're not that bad for you. Especially in a liquid form, unless you're going to drink them. Um, let's move on to my uh, glues and other things, and I'm just going to grab a couple down here. Here's one that I shared on the crush today, CA Kicker, okay? This is an amine. If you don't know what an amine is, it comes from the Latin for ammonia. If you've ever inhaled ammonia, even in small quantities, it's a lung killer. I had an exposure to this when I was 23 years old at 22% in uh, soluble water and it took about 14% of my respiratory capacity at the age of 23 <clears throat> and that was during my petroleum and refining days. Here's supposed to be the uh, Mr. Hobby blend of uh, lesser um, limonene type environmentally friendly blah 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 this one comes with flammable uh, keep away from heat flames and children use only in well ven ventilated areas <clears throat> I do have both uh, to me extra thin and equivalents, but let me show you guys the differences on this real quick. Readers on, Scott, ready to go. Um, the uh, the quick set contains ac acetone, <clears throat> which is a derivative of acetate, methyl ethyl ketones and ethyl acetate. Do not use near heat flames and sparks as opposed to the regular set. Timint contains only acetone and butyl acetate. This is the one I'm calling bullshit. All for you, Steph. <clears throat> and let's do one more and then I'll make a final wrap up for you guys. Mm. Oh, this is a nasty one. Plastruct, plastic weld. For best results, hold parts, and we don't need to read that. Contains methyl ethyl ketone. Do not take internally. It does say warning, vapor harmful eye irritant, and it is. Do not sniff. <clears throat> it's a highly evaporative, high-end chemical. Very, very dangerous for you. Um, finally tonight, as I'm trying not to desperately run out of time, if you guys can guess who manufactures this paint, kudos to you because you're already well on your way to learning. To learning. The bottom line is the documents that I had translated through my two very helpful friends um, basically said that the real constituents of what is in Tamiya Extra Thin are the exact same things that is in this metal, this Mr. Hobby SM203. This is one of their super metallic blends in, in uh, Super Iron 2. And let me just read through these real quick. Contains 2 pentanone 4 methyl, 2 pentanone 4 hydroxy 4 methyl ethanol, butanone, butanol, acetic acid, butyl ester, acetic acid, ethyl ester, and may contain carbon black. Every single one of those suckers, guess what, is not only a target killer, it's also a carcinogen. And the really scary thing about a lot of your paints that a lot of these manufacturers like to innocently proclaim to you as acrylics. They're not. This is a, a synthesized blend of an acrylic paint that is easily thinnable, and you would not think this to be proper, but this is very easily thinnable with Mr. Hobby leveling thinner. Once you have it down thin, and believe me, this is what I painted my T34 with, I know. I thinned this at 90% just to get this snot to spray out of my airbrush, and you know what I can do with it now? I can add water to it, spray it like 
Goblins on Christmas. Halloween, excuse me. I know I've covered a lot tonight, but I really did just want to share with you guys. And I know that I blazed through that again. I wasn't trying to give you a chemical lesson. I just want you to be aware of the hazards that are on your bench. Educate yourselves. These things can hurt you specifically if you're a part-time modeler. You might be more inclined to uh, maybe suffer an acute exposure. If you're a long-term modeler and been doing it for a great time, you're certainly going to suffer um, chronic exposure from some of these things. Take the time. Learn about the products that are on your bench. Um, I made a pretty strong statement against Tamiya tonight. I do like their products, but I do not like misrepresentation of hazards and standards and that comes from my heart to yours because being <clears throat> being a member of the fire service for as many years as I was obviously I'm of the inclination that I want to give something back to the public and the communities that I serve and I want to do something righteous to help protect them this is something righteous to help protect them I hope you guys have enjoyed I hope you ha I haven't confused you I don't want to scare you out of the hobby I'm just encouraging you be careful glove up wear respirators there's a ton of other content and, and topics that we could cover tonight, but I am fast running out of time. I am Scott at S3 Model Works. And again, um, thank you all for your subscriptions, your likes, your kind comments. And don't forget my 50 subscribers. That's a milestone for